Hello, my name is Sebastian Heil and I would like to provide an overview of our paper Web User Interface as a Message, which focuses on the use of power laws for fraud detection in crowdsourced image labeling. This work is a collaboration between Chemnitz University of Technology and our colleague Maxim Bakayev from Novosibirsk State Technical University. We are working in the domain of web user interface analysis and there it is often important to know the contents of a web user interface. UI object detection is used in order to derive the location and the types of the user interface objects. In order to automatically perform this detection, typically deep neural networks are used. And these deep neural networks require significant amounts of training data. A common approach to create this training data is by using crowdsourcing and have the crowd perform image labeling tasks. However, the problem with crowdsourcing is quality because you have a significant share of either low quality crowd workers or even malicious crowd workers. Common techniques for crowdsourcing quality control are ground truth and majority consensus. However, these perform not very well for UI labeling tasks due to their high level of redundancy and for majority consensus also the problem of merging contributions from different crowd workers and resolving conflicts, which is not trivial. Specifically for image labeling tasks, the time on task metric is commonly used. However, for user interface labeling, there can be quite some variety in the complexity of the user interface screenshots that are labeled and also we have seen in our experiments that the time on task metric is very easy to manipulate by the crowd workers. So our idea for this paper is to follow the semiotic view and consider a user interface essentially as a message. For natural language texts, there are characteristics that allow us to distinguish between random texts and real texts. Most prominently, Zipf's law considers the rank frequency distributions of words, and random texts are known to not fit to Zipf's law well. Now, if we can find similar characteristics for the elements in user interfaces, then we could use them for fraud detection in UI labeling. Zipf's law is basically a special case of a power law, and power laws have been successfully applied for fraud detection in other domains. An example in the finance domain is Benford's law for the leading digits. The hypothesis for our paper is that the degree of compliance of UI element frequencies with the power law can better explain the variance in workers' performance for UI labeling tasks than the baseline metric of time on task. To check this hypothesis, we designed an experiment and used our dataset of 500 already labeled UI screenshots from previous experimentation, and we also allocated a budget of 300 US dollars. With that budget, we went to the Amazon Mechanical Turk crowdsourcing platform and we used the standard tooling for image labeling tasks, which is called Crowd Bounding Box. The experiments ran for 44 days in the summer of 2020 and the reward configuration was set to pay 10 US dollars per each set of 20 completed human intelligence tasks, that is, 20 labeled screenshots. The variables in our experiment are 
the class frequency distributions of the individual workers, and then the Kolmogorov Smirnov statistic based goodness of fit to a power law, and as a baseline, the mean time on task metric. We performed manual verification of the results with uh, the precision value being the ratio between approved and all submitted by one crowd worker. As a result, we received submissions from almost 300 unique crowd workers. The crowd worker has completed more than 1,200 tasks and labeled more than 31,000 user interface objects in the screenshots. On average per each screenshot, the crowd workers needed a little bit more than 10 minutes, so 635 seconds, and we have an overall precision of about 0 0.442. From that entire data set, we selected our testing set of 20 workers who have labeled at least 10 screenshots. In this slide, you can see the analysis results from our testing set. The diagram on the left is a rank frequency diagram. On the vertical axis, you have the normalized frequency of the individual labels the classes that were used by the workers, and on the horizontal axis you see the rank of these labels. Please note that the labels represented by the ranks on the horizontal axis have a different meaning for each individual crowd worker. Shown in green are the crowd workers who have a precision of 1, shown in red are those which have a precision of 0, and in yellow you see those who are somewhere between 1 and 0. The black line in the middle shows the fitted power law with an alpha of 2.49. And as you can see visually here, the good workers, the green ones, align better to the power law than the bad workers, the red lines in the figure. Our regression analysis also shows that the goodness of fit explains the variance and precision better than the time on task metric. The same can be seen in the multiple regression on the bottom of the slide, where the goodness of fit factor has much more influence on the precision estimation than the time on task factor. And you can also see that the combined metrics have a slightly better R squared than the individual regressions. To conclude our presentation, we have shown some early evidence that power laws might be applicable for quality control when crowdsourcing user interface labeling tasks. We have shown that the goodness of fit factor performs better than the commonly used time on task. And also this factor is significantly harder to manipulate compared to the time-based metric. Limitations of the current approach is that it requires a sufficient worker input. That means we need enough labeled screenshots with enough objects in them in order to perform the distributional analyses which this work is based on. We also found some quantitative reinforcement of the semiotic view of user interfaces as messages in human computer systems as postulated by de Sousa in 2005. Our future work will explore this topic in more detail and in particular Apart from the class frequencies, we are interested in the spatial distributions. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, then you are very welcome to ask them in the live session or to contact us via the contact data that is shown in this slide. Thank you.